Sujata, I am so glad that you could join me today. Um, you are one of the writers that I try never to miss a book from. Um, how did you get interested in writing a Japan, a series based in Japan and then a series based in India, which is kind of my part of the world with A Bend in the River? Oh, hi, Libby. It's great to see you. And I also have to give some love back to you. As a former, the former president of Sisters in Crime, you were a real inspiration to me throughout my career. So I'm really happy to be here with you celebrating A Bend in the River and talking a little bit about, you know, these jumps that we make. Um, but first of all, you were asking me why I wrote about Japan. A lot of people ask me that because I'm not Japanese. Right. Um, what happened is I lived in Japan for a few years at the beginning of my marriage, and it was the end of my journalism career, and I knew I didn't want to stop writing. And yes, I could have tried to freelance articles, but I felt like doing something different, and I love mysteries. So I decided to write a mystery about the world that I was in, which was suburban Japan. It was women's Japan. It was, I was also very interested in the relationship between the U.S. and Japan. That tormented history because of World War II. And that's something, of course, that you touch in your book. Yeah, yeah. So the first book you wrote was the first book that got published? Incredibly lucky. That book is The Salary Man's Wife, and I just thought it was going to live in a drawer. And that's a mystery about a young Japanese American woman who moves to Japan, her father's country, and she's trying to make a career in the arts. And that doesn't go quite as she expected. So she's an English teacher, which was the kind of work that I was doing. And it's always nice if you have a little bit of a foothold in a job. Obviously, you need a foothold in a country. You need to have been there. Um, but that was how I got the courage to keep going. Wow. And it was a big hit, I, I remember. So anyway, let's, let's move on to India. How did, how did that start? Was Praveen there from the very beginning? No, I, 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 I didn't. I, I write a mystery. What, what happened is I, I wrote a standalone book. It was an experiment. It was a window into writing about India. And for many years, people had said, oh, do you have something to say about India? And I actually, frankly, resented it. It's just, I thought that people looked at my skin color, they looked at my name, and they said, oh, because of that, you just know about the Indian world. You're not really an American. You aren't really a person who can do different things. Oh, and I what I've heard from other writers of color is, you know, like, uh, an African-American writer isn't allowed to write about Ireland or England. Um, you know, an Indian writer isn't supposed to write about Italy. You know, there are all those kinds of things. So I really started my career doing something that did not have to do with my name and my skin color. And then gradually, a story in India found me. And I didn't so much feel that I had to hang on to an Indian story because it was what people expected of me. It was what I was driven to do. So tell me a little bit about The Sleeping Dictionary, which, as you know, is one of my favorite books of yours. Thank you. It's like really close to my heart, too. I have a copy of it here at <laughs> <in> this show. <laughs> um, it was a paperback original from Simon & Schuster in 2013. Um, it did not give you the attention that it, you and the book deserve. Well, I, I loved writing this book. It took me four years. It's a, it's a novel. Um, it's a, a historical suspense novel about a young Bengali woman who came from a very different background than my family. She came from a peasant background, and she, it's the 1920s, and she loses her whole, um, her whole family and, and village in, in a cyclone. And so she has to make her way through India, um, you know, in British India, where all the odds are stacked against her. And Basically, you know, for a young woman with nobody taking care of you, you could be a maid or you could be a prostitute. 
how can she make her way past those possibilities? How can she become part of liberating her country? You know, that, those were the I things loved, that- I loved, I, you're, I'm getting chills remembering the story. <laughs> so, I, you know, A Bend in the River, it, it starts out similarly, not as with a cyclone, but with a massacre of, uh, of a village um, by American forces in 1968, kind of like a Lieutenant Callie kind of thing. And the only survivors are, are two sisters and they make their way to Saigon after the massacre and they, 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 they diverge. They have very different life experiences and they're estranged. Um, and, and coincidentally, now Caucasian women are not supposed to write about another ethnicity. And I showed it to a few agents who said, uh, she, we really like this book, but there's no way we could sell it. So I wrote a very, a very polite author's note in the book where I'm sort of uh, talking about that issue and what I think of it. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, I read your note. It's a, it's a really difficult time. Um, and I don't know if I could have published my Ray Shimura mysteries, which are set in Japan now. Like Absolutely. the next book that I'm having read, I'm having it read by, you know, a, a um, very respected older, you know, police officer, because I want to make sure my Indian police procedures, right? And he's a police historian. I'm, I'm going to, I, I have my religious things read by people of those religions, you know, because I can't, you know, I, I have a Hindu background, but I wasn't really raised like a Hindu. And, and how can I speak, um, you know, respectfully and honestly about other people? Yeah, so, and it's not like ever, and, the, and this is the thing, you can't just demand that a person who meets those specifications read your work, right? I actually worked with um, a second generation Vietnamese uh, editor here in the U.S. who um, made a lot of corrections and saved me from embarrassing myself, especially with the honorifics and the way you address somebody in, 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 in India, in Vietnam, which is very mm -hmm. different than how we do it here and making sure that I had the, the customs and the socialization correct and that my white Caucasian American ways weren't getting in the way of the story. And I'm indebted to her. We owe it to our readers to be as accurate as we can. Thank you again for your time. And um, it's, it's the only way I get to see you. <laughs> I know, I miss seeing you, Libby, and we I will be together you. again. But until then, we have each other's books to read. And yes, we do. Yes, we do, and I will. Thanks again. My pleasure. <laughs>